Welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Los Angeles. The topic of today is to love yourself and accept yourself. For the moment, we're just going to do a meditation, uh, as always we do. I would like you to uh, close your eyes, bring your attention within yourself, center yourself, and hang in here within your heart. Hang in here with your own being. That's where it's always safe, and that's where you discover the truth of who you are when you do bring your attention to your own center, when you bring your attention to your own heart here at this place. So go ahead. Bring your attention to your own center, to your own heart. If you want to put your hands on your heart, you can do that and feel yourself. It's basically shifting your attention from the other world, the world outside of yourself, to the being and the beauty of who you are. There is a recognition of the truth of your being, of who you are. By shifting your attention from what appears to be real, what appears to be separate to what is real and what is one and what is never changes and it's always here. So we're simply shifting our attention. Take a deep breath. Just relax. Let your mind flow. Don't manipulate your thoughts. Don't force the meditation to come. Allow meditation to happen on its own accord. All you have to do is simply shifting your attention from the other world, the world outside of yourself, to the inner world. And as you do that, you will see and feel something shifting a sense of calm, calmness taking over. Your nervous system begin to mellow down. Your heartbeat changes. Your vibrations begin to rise. And you tap into the unified field of oneness. You tap into an energy field that is here that is available and this energy field it's a field of intelligence and wisdom that brings you the sense and the feeling that all is well everything is taken care of and there's nothing you need to worry about
Just relax. If your mind is busy, don't try to stop it. Don't get engaged with it as far as allow it to be, let your thoughts flow, the stream of thoughts to come and go. Don't fight them. Just hang in here in this energy field. And very slowly you begin to feel a connection. You tap into the collective energy field. And the feeling of it would be as if we're all sitting together in one big hall room and we're working together. The sense of separation will disappear. Distance will become irrelevant. Our hearts will unite in this field. When you do disengage from your daily mental activity and your intention is oneness, your intention is love, your intention is to be happy, but not through the pleasure of senses, you naturally enter into a zone and you begin to feel a presence that we call it the Maj Her Majesty, the Supreme Soul, the presence of God, the presence of the Living Spirit. You begin to feel that within yourself. And a certain bliss and joy will take over your life. This is not a difficult place to arrive to. All you have to do is just be open. Be willing. And this is not something that you do. It's not an action. This is something you allow.
as you are in this place, I would like you to put your hands on your heart and remember your innocence, remember your beauty. Remember when you were a child, you were five, six, seven, eight, nine years old, 10 years old. Before you got tainted, go, go to that place that how much, how you looked at life with enthusiasm and you were open to life, your excitement of it. You didn't have any ideas, prejudice. You weren't colored yet. Go back to this place and I want you to come to this place that you love yourself and accept yourself without any stories. Put your story away. Whatever is your story, that your daddy beat you up or raped you or mom abandoned you or you, you abandon your children, whatever you've done or has happened to you, I want you to put it away right now. Put it in a bag and put that bag away and just be innocent in this moment. Don't know anything. Just be here with me. And repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Keep your attention on the inner world. This is not a mental exercise. You don't have to think. You're simply keeping your attention on the bliss and the presence and the silence that you're experiencing in this moment. The next meditation, we're going to do an active meditation today. We haven't done one for a long time. So I'm going to ask you to stand up, please. So. I do. So. Those of you who've been with me in the past, you know how it works. We're gonna be shaking and making noises. So 
So be on as uninhibited as you wish to be. So we're going to be shaking our bodies and making noises and jump and move around and just kind of releasing all this tension, all this fear, all this stuff, all the stuff that we've been bombarding with through the media or through the public or people around us carrying all this fear and anxiety and worry. So so you can follow me. We start. Take a deep breath. <sighs> Sink back inside your heart. Put your hands here. Come back, shift your attention inwards to the center of yourself. And I would like you to, in this moment again, put your life story away. Whatever is your life story, it doesn't matter. And I would like you to just love and accept yourself in this moment the way you are. So repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody because I'm love, because I'm light, because I'm God. That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 The next one. Meditation we're going to be doing is called hoo hoo. We're going to raise our hands to the sky and we're going to jump up and down and we're going to start saying hoo hoo. Just one moment, I need to adjust my camera a little bit. Okay, we're good. Just one moment. Stay in your center. All right. Okay. Yah. Hoo 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 hoo. Take a deep breath. Oh, sink inside your heart. Come back to your center. Oh. Put your hands on your heart again. And repeat after me. I love myself. I love myself. I love everybody. I forgive myself. I forgive everybody. Because I'm love. Because I'm light. Because I'm God. 
That's why I love myself. And I forgive myself. I say yes to love. Yes to love. Yes. 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 Take a deep breath. Okay, you can come back to your seat now. Come back to your center. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. <sighs> Active meditation <coughs> helps you go deeper and pushes your mind away and helps you become quiet. Ah, oh. you simply having your attention to your own center. You have this engaged from the world outside of yourself. And then you feel the bliss, the calmness, and the love which is here. And you tap into that. Recognizing that the power of love is within ourselves. You are the source of it. And by bringing your attention means, in other words, taking your attention away from the other world, the world that you are perceiving and you're engaged with by your senses, by taking your attention from that world and bringing your attention inwards, then you begin to feel the presence, you begin to feel the love which is here. We are the very source of love on this planet. Love is coming from you. Whatever love that you encounter on daily basis in your life is a reflection of the love that is inside yourself. Whenever you're coming across a loving person, somebody's kind is also reflecting that part of love that's inside yourself. That person is a reflection. And if you're gravitated to somebody that you find loving and kind, know that you're recognizing a portion of yourself. It's a part of yourself that you're recognizing. 
and you're loving. The major problem that we were we deal with on this planet, majority of us having issues in our lives is that from childhood we start to get tainted different events happen and a lot of us get damaged we get damaged with by our parents if there are any parents or the society our guardians people around us and different events happen the very fundamental issue is that sense of abandonment that we feel being abandoned and left out but all these different events that happen in our lives it brings us to this point of and as well as i also need to do this is the hypnosis that we go through in this life from childhood this notion that love and acceptance is coming from the outside and as a child you you have no idea and you have no choice because you get brainwashed to believe that love is coming from your parents your guardians your foster parents or whomever is taking care of you uh, and that is depending on your behavior if for most of us uh, it's like that so if you behave in a certain way then mommy is going to love you daddy is going to love you and they're going to reward you based on the behavior that that they're expecting you or they're encouraging you to do so you've been a good girl you brush your teeth or you you ate your food you took your vitamins you did your uh homeworks and mom daddy says oh what a what a good girl what a good boy and then based on that they caress you or they kiss you or they hug you or they buy you something or get you ice cream you get rewarded for that so you start to get conditioned to believe that you have to do something in order to get love and acceptance so this this relationship this behavior uh the, the, we begin to develop this relationship with the society with our teachers with our um with our government with with our parents friends that you have to do certain kind of behavior in order to be loved and accepted so naturally you begin to project that love and acceptance is coming from outside it's not inside yourself and it's not something that you have to recognize within yourself it's something you have to do something to get it and then at the same time you're watching all these movies you're listening to all these songs and they're all relating and referring to love and acceptance is coming from the outside it's something you have to gain it so you start to also project that if you fall in love with someone if you're in a relationship with a man and a woman and when they leave you and they're no longer interested in being with you then you go through a heartbreak and you're heartbroken you're destroyed your life is finished because you lost love because you've been projecting it that the love that you experienced came from the outside so from somebody else so now that this person leaves you you have lost the love and so it's a projection of the mind nobody's really teaching us from the day one that you are as you are the way you are the source of love 
because we're not being trained to bring our attention within. We're not being trained to recognize the presence of, the, of Her Majesty, the presence of God, the presence of the living spirit inside ourselves and to pay any attention to it. So when you don't pay any attention to it, you don't recognize it. So instead of recognizing it within yourself, you're looking for it outside. So when the events on the outside world go according to uh, your wishes, then you're happy. And when things don't go your way, then you're miserable. So this relationship continues and for vast majority of human beings on this planet, they go through a deep sense of regret, hatred, self-hatred, lack of self-love and acceptance because all of their lives they've been projecting it that it comes from somewhere else and they're looking for the confirmation of this love and acceptance from the other world and the other world is not always giving it to you so this is a major epidemic this is a major problem that vast majority of human beings they go through it throughout their lives and they never recognize it. Until we come to a point in our lives that whether we do therapy or we come across some kind of literature or you come across a teacher or somehow there's a shift in your consciousness that you begin to touch something here you begin your attention may shift if you're lucky enough or if it's meant to be it's in your destiny your attention begin to shift in this direction and you begin your mind becomes quiet so now you're not projecting love self-acceptance on an other world your mind has become quiet you're becoming centered and you're hanging out here with yourself and in this hanging out here with yourself, you begin to see something's happening. There's an alchemy. There is a chemical reaction happening. Something's going on and you begin to feel a sense of bliss, a sense of presence, a sense of love. Quite often, if you're doing this with a teacher, with a guru or a guide then you begin to project this on your teacher you think because of your teacher you're getting this love that's again another trap you need to be careful not to fall into that trap again you're projecting it on the other world if you sense love and acceptance you feel calmness when we're together it's not because of me or it's not because of another teacher. It's because of yourself. It's because you're becoming quiet and your attention is going inwards and you're paying attention to yourself. You're beginning to get a taste of the presence which is inside you, the love which is inside you. You're getting a taste of it and it's enormous. This presence that's within you, this love that it's inside you, it's huge, it's vast, and it's waiting to be discovered. But in order for it to, to be discovered, you have to also learn how to become quiet. The more you become quiet, the more you begin to feel it. The more you begin to feel it, the more you recognize that it's coming from here. And here could be anywhere that you are. And that's the good news. That is the good news, my brothers, sisters, that really you are the one who you're looking for. The power of love, the power of the presence, 
the silence, the bliss that you're looking for is really generating from within yourself. It can't be any more simple than that. But for that, you have to begin to let go of the ideas you have and, and begin to forgive yourself and forgive others, which is a very difficult thing to do for a lot of us. But it does require spiritual training, like any kind of training in our lives. Every time you want to decondition and to let go of an old pattern and replace it by a new way, you have to be attentive to it. You need to work on it because naturally the mind wants to go to the old ways. The mind wants to go to whatever is in the past because that's the only place that it lives. The mind is in the past. Whatever you think is the future is what the mind brings from the past and projected into the future. But basically it comes from the past. But here, if you detach yourself from your past, from your future, you detach yourself from whatever has happened in either one. And you just here right now in this very moment. No ideas. Forget about your marriages. How many times you've screwed up in a marriage? Forget about whatever is going to happen into the future because we don't know. Forget about that you betrayed your ex-wife or husband or you betrayed your children and you left them. You abandoned them. You left. Okay, I understand. You did that. It wasn't a good thing to do. You did it. But here and now, right now, if you can detach yourself from both both past and the future and hang out in this moment. Just do it right now in this moment. Hang out in this moment right now. Put your story away. All the pain, all the story that you have, for one moment detach yourself from it and just hang out here. For one moment, Put your ideas away. Whatever idea you have about yourself. You should have done that. You should have done this. You should have never became an alcoholic. You should have never became a drug addict or a sex addict. You should have never invested your money recklessly in stock market. You are screwed up because you didn't go to college, you didn't educate yourself. Put the story away, okay? Put the story away and hang out here with me in this moment, in this moment, right now. And see what's here right now. Examine it for yourself. You don't have to believe what I tell you. You don't have to re repeat what I tell you like, or whatever you heard from Osho or you've read from another guru or another teacher or Jesus or the Bible or Moses. You don't have to repeat those things. You need to discover this for yourself in this moment. Hang out in this moment right now, away from your past and the future and look and see what you find. You find innocence. That's what you find. You find yourself being six, seven years old without an idea. And you will see your enthusiasm about life again. You will feel the love which is here. And if you want to go deeper into it and you want to really liberate yourself, then you have an option. 
you can surrender your will, you can surrender your free will, you can surrender your past to God, you can just surrender it and say, Lord God, Majesty, I surrender my free will. Whatever I've done in my life and whatever I'm going to do, I surrender it to you. From now on, you operate through me. I don't have a free will anymore. I surrender that to you. And let her majesty, the supreme, operating to you, making your decisions, thinking through you, making your mistakes, making your, your success. Let, it, let that one do it by surrendering to it. And then you will see things get washed away because you come to this acceptance that everything that has happened up to this moment, it was a part of the grand plan. You had to go through it to come to this point. You had to become humble. Your ego had to be washed. Everything in your life needed to be happened to that way for you to become who you are today. Look how much you've experienced. Look how much you've learned through everything that has happened to you. And the people who've done you wrongdoings. All of them were a part of this play. They had to be on your way because this is what you needed to learn. But now you can let it go and you can go back to your essence because you don't really have a choice. You can't do anything else. You can't continue carrying your past with you and hate yourself and hate other people. You're not gonna get anywhere with that. You will stay in this realm of thoughts, this realm of mind, this realm of suffering. You will keep suffering. You will keep hating. You will keep being angry. You will keep staying the victim. You will keep dwelling on taking revenge. At one point, you have to give it up. At one point, you have to become innocent and start coming back to the essence of who you are. At one point, you have to come to this place that you don't know anything. You don't have an idea of anything. You are here and you're surrendered. You surrender yourself. And ask love to take over you. Ask love to operate through you wash you and cleanse you. And you begin that with one simple act. You stop judging yourself. You start with that. I'm not talking about boosting your ego. I'm not talking about telling yourself going into this selfish way. I am like this, or I am da 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 da, and I do whatever I want, and I don't give a shit about anybody else. I'm not talking about that type of a behavior. That as opposite, it's still the same thing. It's boosting the ego. I'm talking about letting go of the ideas and sinking back in here and hanging out with the being, spending time with your being recognizing the presence here. And when your mind wants to go into the past in a story, oh, the, all this suffering, all this thing has happened to me. I've been so traumatized and I've gone through all this pain. 
the mind wants to go to these stories because it has an addiction to it because it loves to play this tape this video this repeated broken record of poor me and all these things have happened to me and i'm so screwed up i can't get fixed the world is screwed up at one point you're going to have to give that up and come back here and accept yourself for the way you are right now accept yourself for the body you have accept yourself for the weight you have accept yourself for your color the face the looks you have the age you are at the education you have come back to that and accept yourself the way you are right now and then you will see the power to that because when you start to accept yourself the way you are there is power to it and i'm not talking about power as far as manipulating people i'm talking about power as far as greatness as far as elevation because very few people on this planet are capable to do that very few people are able to let go and come to terms with themselves for the way you are and to do that is this is the key you need to because it's difficult to just one day say okay i'm just going to forgive myself for whatever i've done in my past and i accept myself for the way i am it's very difficult for a lot of people you may say it but the next day you're back into the rut what you need to do is to recognize that your presence and your life and your being is an expression of the absolute you are here because of god's will you have to give this to the higher power because we as individuals don't have the power to fix it you have to surrender it to the higher power you don't like the word god presence use presence the spirit the living spirit universe the presence you are the way you are and you live the life you lived is because of god's will ishvara the hindu god ishvara yahweh jehovah allah krishna buddha christ moses muhammad huh? that that which has created existence that which is running the world that which is the grand intelligence it's been here ever since the ever since you are an expression of that i am an expression of it when i do healing work and miracles happen or i'm working on individual basis with people or i do work workshops group work or individual work i witnessed healing happen people's lives change all of a sudden their broken heart heals all of a sudden their mental illness heals everything comes back and they become collected and centered and i can see that i did not do it i can see it very clearly something much more intelligent than me some much greater power operated through me and did that to them
we surrender to that, it's much easier to surrender to the higher power, the higher intelligence, and you trying to figure things out on your own. There's a lot of suffering in that. There's a lot of struggle in it. It's much easier to defer to God and let God to operate through you and come back to your innocence. But in order to defer things to God and let God operate through you, you have to become quiet. You have to meditate. You have to spend time with the God which is inside you. And be simple and just be humble and just hang out with it. Feel the presence around you. And that's a big part of what we do here is to feel the presence that is here. Feel your own presence, the presence, one presence. And don't project it on anyone. Don't fall into this trap of projecting it on somebody else. That someone else is an aspect of yourself. Whatever teacher it is, an enlightened being, a guru, a high being, Christ, that's an aspect of yourself. You are experiencing yourself. You're experiencing the love which is here, a part of yourself. Keep it simple. Respect your teachers and guides, but recognize that you are experiencing the presence of God here from yourself. And fall in love with that. And the more you fall in love with God, the more you fall in love with life, the more life will fall in love with you. The more you experience the magic. The less you fear, the less you judge yourself. It's not very difficult as it, sem as it may seem to be. I know a lot of us have years and years of a lot of stuff that has happened to us. Some of us have gone through very traumatic lives to get to where we're at. I understand that. And for some of you, it may be very difficult to say, well, how can I let it go? How can I do that? I know. But you can, because support and help is here. Because you have come to the cross point in your life, that transformation is available to happen for you. You don't need to figure it out how you're going to do it. You just available and it will happen. Just be available. That's it. It's all you do. Because a greater force will do it for you. You just be available for it. Okay. I have a few... A couple of people have sent different things to me. All right, so you are completely clear. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Beautiful. Thank you for simplicity and clarity of your realization. You're welcome. Thanks for communicating. Appreciate it. Okay, I have on a Facebook. Um, I won't mention the name, but 
I am getting divorced. How can I follow God's energy when I am about to lose my children? All right, so someone on Facebook wrote that to me. <clears throat> when you are in a very tough situation, like you're about to be divorced and you're about to lose your children and you feel like the entire world is going to end, your life is about, that's how it feels. You're in such a dark place within yourself that life is going to end. Uh, one moment, please excuse me. I need to, uh, my Instagram ended. Just one second, let me redo this. And uh, I'm gonna run this again. I'm not trying to avoid answering your question. Just one second, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened here. Be patient with me. Okay. When we are in really tough situations like this, so uh, you've been in, in marriage, uh, you're dependent, you all of a sudden going through a major turmoil like this and you may be losing everything and it seems it feels like your reality your world is crumbling down and it's very frightening i completely understand that my my dear friend and it's you feel like someone sitting here and is telling you oh, don't worry, everything is going to be fine. And, and you may say, oh, well, yeah, it's easy for you to say that, but you're not in this situation, so you're not about to lose everything. So, um, but this is the deal. The deal is that all of this world and this life that you were thinking that it's real and it's which is your reality wasn't really real to begin with and when you come to a pivotal point like this is if you can shift your because i understand where you're at right now but if you can, for a moment, pull these glasses out and put them away. If you can do it for a moment, if you can do it for like 30 seconds, if you can do it for one day, and, <coughs> excuse me, put your new glasses on. So you put your story away and you put your new glasses on and you look at it from this point of view, is that, regardless of how frightening everything is, that I'm going to lose everything. For one moment, I will, I'm willing to put this away and I change and look at it. That what is God, what is life planning for me? What is it I'm going to receive? Is it possible that what will be coming through this separation and this world, this bubble that I lived in, that I believe this is my life. I believe this is solid, which is obviously not because it's all crumbling down. I'm about to lose my marriage and my kids are taken away. But what's the value? What can I get out of this? What could be there for me? And if you're open to it, you will experience whether you like it or you don't like it because it's happening right now. And it depends on how much you're resisting it, no matter how frightening it is. Okay, I understand it's frightening. 
I understand you feel like your life is coming to an end and you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I get it. But I'm also going to share with you that if you keep your heart open, miracles are going to happen and you are going to be transformed and taken to a much higher place than you are today right now. But if you resist it and you're really trying to hang on to all of it and you buy into your mind freaking out, it's going to be hell and there's going to be a lot of suffering. But no one thing that the same force, the same intelligence, Her Majesty, the Supreme Being that has given all of us life is the one that brought you into this marriage is the one that put everything together for you. And it is the same one that is making everything fall apart. If you can trust that and recognize the presence of God that put this together and now is tearing it apart, then you will transform and and give yourself a major chance of realization to go into this place of bliss by surrendering to the will of God and by staying in your heart and staying in this place that something else is going to come and happen in your life. Something is going to take care of you. Doors will open up to you no matter how dark things seem to be. And this is a part of your path and your karma. This is a part of your spiritual evolution to come to this. This is actually not a bad place. This is actually a blessing because what God is doing right now to you is destroying the illusion that you used to live in. It's taking and ripping that illusion away. And it's going to bring you to this place of realizing so you're forced to look at what is real. What is it that doesn't change versus things that change? So maybe you have this opportunity to recognize and bring your attention inwards towards that which is always here with you, that which is the source of true love. And you find that comfort and that love here within yourself after all the turmoil that you go through. You will be taken care of, my dear sister. You will not be left out in the world, in the cold, to be destroyed. Stay in this place of love of God. Ask for God to give you strength and to stay with you. Keep feeling the presence. Keep your attention, bring here. Rather than taking your attention out, to the place of being a victim. Because it's kind of like every day you're getting close to your execution. It's like they're walking you to the end of the line where you're going to be executed. And you're really resisting to get to that point because you think your life is going to end. Your life as you know it will end but something much bigger and greater is waiting for you on the other side. It's the death of the ego. It's the death, death of the I thought. It's the death of the one who thinks is separated from everything else. That's the one is going to be executed. But once that one is dead, then you realize the true part of yourself you recognize 
the love which is within yourself, that presence, that nobody can take it away from you. The courts, the divorce, losing your children. Once you discover that, you will not lose anything. Life will come back and give you everything again. But you have to go through this death. Okay, let me take a look at a couple of our messages here. I went through severe trauma from young age all the way to 13, was shattered, but thank, thankfully have always been inclined to turn towards creator source, have received many blessings, guidance, has been long winding journey, and finally at age 67, beginning to settle into my center. Deeply appreciate support in doing that through you. You not making it about you. Thanks, Zaratustra. Okay. The self, Jesus said, wombats let go to save our soul. Oops, lol. Anyway. Um, <clears throat> I met a young lady last week uh, in Sedona, Arizona, and the traumas that she has gone through was mind blowing. The stories that I heard from her of at age witnessing her grandmother being beaten by the, grand, by the grandfather. And at age four, she sees that the bone of grandmother on her hand was broken out. And this four year old gets to see that. At age six, Stepfather is about to strangle her mom and her mom got blue and almost died and she jumps over the, the stepfather and yelling that, please don't kill my mom. At age 14 or 15, being raped, raped by the stepfather. I mean, the stories I heard was just like really heartbreaking and, and it was like, unbelievable and if you're not and i could see like this person has come to light very kind very loving has come to the spirit she's not bitter she's not angry it was so beautiful to see the transformation of this person when a similar person brought this story to Ramana Maharishi, Maharishi would always say that sometimes or a lot of times when we have to go to this kind of traumatic events in our first 20 years, 25 years, 30 years of our lives, or maybe longer, is for the advanced souls, those who have come to the last stage of their lives. This may be the last time you're going to take a human form and live. So you're burning your karma in that first 20, 30, 40 years of being beaten, being raped, being abandoned, being kicked around, and you're burning that karma. Your existence has speeded up. So you don't have to come back for another life. And if you don't go in a dark side, which in her case, she didn't, it brought her to the light. So the way from a higher perspective in the spiritual world to look at it is, is that, that you are doing your sadhana and you're burning your karma so you're done with that. And from then on, when the light comes and realization comes, self-realization, the knowledge and wisdom comes, then you work yourself. You already paid your karma. So now you're working your way towards the light. 
So sometimes in those severe cases, it's, we can look at it that it's a blessing because you don't have to come back again. Exactly the same thing happened to Ananda Mai, uh, happened to Ma Amritananda Mai, the hugging mother. Do you, how many of you know Amaji, the hugging mother, the Indian lady guru who travels around the world and she hugs people? I met her at her ashram in 1992. I went to South Kerala. Uh, and I went to her ashram. At that time, she wasn't that big. People didn't know her very much. It was still smaller. I witnessed her hug 35,000 people in three days. 35,000 people came to her ashram and she hugged all of them. She got up once a day and went pee to the bathroom and came back. She didn't eat food. She didn't sleep for three days nonstop. She was hugging people. When I read her life story, for the first 21 years of her life, she, she was born in an Indian family in South Kerala. Everybody was fair skin for Indians. Um, and she was the darkest person. Actually, the first few days when she was born, her skin was blue, which later on it was recognized that it was kind of a re re reincarnation of uh, Krishna. So she was very, very dark. Her family did not like her. And her family, her parents, her siblings, they treated her, the youngest daughter in the family, as a maid. They treated her as a maid. Her parents used to beat the hell out of her. I mean, can you imagine? You have a six, seven-year-old daughter and you beat her up all the way to age 21. She wasn't allowed to go to family parties and gatherings. They m turned her to a maid. I mean... This is, for me, hard to imagine that I make one of my kids or youngest daughter, I beat her up regularly, I make her be a maid, treat her like a maid, and everybody else in the family treats her like a maid. We're talking about Amma, Amaji, the hugging mother, the guru. She's an avatar. At age 21, when her consciousness merged the cosmic cos consciousness and she went through a full awakening and enlightenment, she awakened to the truth of who she is. She realized that it was a part of her karma and that was God's will, that was the Ishvara, that was the Lord God the creator of the universe, acting through her parents. Her parents, she started to see that her parents in the first 21 years of her life were her guru. They were beating her up and abusing her. They were burning her karma. She burned her karma. And at age 21, she fully became realized and i consider her today that she's an avatar she's an enlightened being that has spiritual powers after her enlightenment she realized that that was a part of god's will that she had to burn leftover karma in the first 21 years by being abused, she forgave her parents. She has no resentments and her family. Now her family and brothers, sisters, everyone is serving her, serving her mission. So we don't really know and we can't understand the whole picture. We don't see 
the big picture that God sees because we're only here for a short period of time. How old are you? How long have you been here? You're 20, you're 40, you're 50, you're 80 years old. That's nothing in the span of eternity. That's like a blink, like your life, even if you're 85 years old, your life is like a blink. How much do you know in this period of time? How much do you learn? In comparison to that which has been around ever since the ever since, in comparison to the great wisdom. We don't understand it. We don't get it. There's so much we don't know. Even when you think you know, so much you don't know. Now I'm gonna get into this next week. Remind me if I forget. We can't see the big picture, so we don't understand it. We don't know why, why this happens, why that happens why we have to suffer, why we have to go through hardship, why do we get beat, raped, abandoned, kicked around. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm not encouraging it. But we don't understand God's plan. But we get to a point in our evolution of understanding that we surrender to what God wants to do and you let it go and you let, let God to carry you and then everything starts to change. It becomes a smooth ride. I don't understand. I don't understand all the events happen in my life or every time I had to suffer I don't understand why I had to have five near-death experiences. I don't understand why I was saved all five times, where I should have been dead. I don't understand why my sister had to die at age 53 and my mother is 93. I don't understand why somebody goes so early and someone lives for a long time. I don't know the purpose of it. And it doesn't matter if I understand it or not. I don't have to know everything. Same as I don't have to know the engineering of a car in order to drive a car. I don't have to understand how fuel injection works, how the brake system works in a car, how the transmission of a car works mechanically in order to drive it. I just have to learn to drive the car and do minor maintenance on it. There's much, a lot I don't understand. But I do understand one thing. The presence is here. God is here. And I am one with that, so are you. And that is what runs everything. That's all I need to know. Everything else takes care of itself. Keep quiet. Be quiet.
stay quiet, hang out here, be quiet. You don't need to know things. And Her Majesty, the Supreme, will carry you, takes care of you, will feed you, will put food on your plate every day, will put money in your account, will pay your bills, will create work for you, will give you a lover when you need it. All you have to do is just bring your attention to the presence of God, which is within yourself. You just stay here and you just trust. I'm not saying you're being stupid, not being intelligent, not using your wisdom. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying like be a robot, be dumb. Like massive number of people in the world that follow whatever news media is telling them. I'm not telling you to be that. You're very intelligent. What I'm telling you is more than anything else that you need to know is one thing you need to know, that the presence is within yourself. Be quiet and then it reveals itself. The great wisdom will reveal itself to you and will carry you because you're not the one who's making the choices. You're not the one who's choosing. It is choosing for you. And those who surrender to it are the ones who will reach fifth dimension. Because this is not a task that one individual person can do it on his own and her own. That's the way. Because if you try to figure it out yourself, you go crazy. Your mind gets more activated. Why is this? Why life is like that? Why God would create second world war? Why so much death? Why, why my child died at age 13? Why, da, 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 da. why did I live to age 90, but my daughter died at age 53? Why this? Why that? Why life is like that? A lot of why, 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 why. And all you do is you get your mind more activated. And your heart gets closer. Because the more you get your mind activated, the more fear comes. The more duality comes. The more separation takes place. The more you're quiet, the more you come to your center, and the more you feel the presence of God, the more the presence of God takes care of everything in your life. I've seen that myself. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've experienced it directly. Five times I should have died. And five times the great power of Lord God chose me to live. That's enough for me to keep my mouth shut and not ask any more questions. To recognize the miracle of life, we don't have to have Lord Moses to come and open up the, the great river or the great ocean for the Hebrew tribe to travel through it. You don't have to see that kind of miracle to feel the presence. Life by itself is a miracle. 
at this very moment that the fact that we're here together and our hearts open and we can communicate with each other and we can feel the love which is here. This great love that we all feel. This great love that I feel for you and you feel for me and we feel it for ourselves and our family and friends. The fact that you can feel this love is a miracle. When a vast majority of humanity is in fear and hate. And you are chosen to love. This is your gift. You don't have to be sitting on massive amount of money and real estate or whatever. You have something, a big portion of the humanity doesn't have and doesn't recognize it. Love is your power. Don't let the media or anybody take that away from you. I don't care what kind of story they're going to feed you. Don't give in to fear or hate. Stay in the love. No matter what you see, no matter what is happening, stay in this place. This is God's way of testing you. Like, are you going to stay with me all the way to the end? Or are you going to give in to what you're seeing? I'm not talking about blind faith of giving up this life for the promise to be in heaven. I'm not talking about that. I'm not stupid. Come on. I'm talking about now. I don't want to wait for something in the future. I want it now. If God is real, I want God now. I don't want to wait for another time or another civilization or another shift. We've had... Those of you who've been on spiritual path had many shifts. So many times stars been aligned. So many times there's been the great conversion or the or activation of the grid or blah 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 blah. I don't want anything of the future. I want it right now. I want God right now. I want love right now. Okay, I'm going to check our messages one more time and then we move on. And whatever needs to be, I'm learning to translate. Okay. Well, thank you for your presence, your beautiful presence. Nice to see you all. And uh, we will continue on the Academy next week. Um, same time. And um, I'm just going to see what kind of responses I'm getting. So... Maybe we go one step at a time. Maybe we we pump up the academy from an hour and a half to an hour 45 minutes or an hour and 40 minutes. So we go one step at a time and see how everything goes. Uh, feel free to keep in touch. Um, this recording will, those of you who've been on the Zoom, uh, we will be 
uh, emailing you the full recording of this academy, of this session. Uh, we also chop it in 10 minute increments and we put it on my YouTube channel. And also the recording of this goes on my podcast channel, which is Zaratustra 5D, same as my um, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube channel, all Zaratustra 5D. Uh, you can find that. My, our email is info at zaratustra.tv. And you're welcome to send me an email or communicate with us on our Facebook uh, pages. I'm thinking about offering a, um, probably a workshop, uh, a global workshop. Uh, it's gonna be a free event. I'm gonna be offering it to my brothers, sisters from all over the world. Um, so I'm working out on the details and the days and the time. Uh, it is a little bit complicated. You have to figure out a lot of different things, but that's definitely coming and probably I'm gonna start next weekend. Um, so stay in tune and I'm gonna put it out. I do wanna offer uh, something of value to the community. So um, it's gonna come, it's gonna be coming. We also have a few new products on my website. You're welcome to go to the product section and take a look at them and see if there's something that you like to purchase. Thank you very much for your presence. I send you my love and light and stay in your heart and remember to love and accept yourself because you are an expression of God and this is how God wants you to be. Namaste.